seven products that will absolutely improve your life. Yeah, I mean, uh, I use these. I recommend them to friends. I have friends recommend them to their friends. I believe that if you use these seven products, you will see an absolute benefit to your life. So make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. But you know what else? Other product might improve your life is Smala. You can get this at smalasauce.com right now from Sichuan to Sicily. You can put this on pastas, rice, noodles, anything. Wow. So David, why are you making this list real quick? Like, are these, these are just seven products that you recently bought in the past year or so, and you've gotten into, and you've seen a difference. Yeah. I mean, I think that these products have been out for quite some time now, some of them, you know, but they've gone through various upgrades, iterations, and innovations. And I finally truly believe in my heart of hearts that they are at a point now where every guy, you know, it doesn't really matter if you're a guy or girl, but particularly guys will find some sort of benefit to their life. Obviously, some guys are going to find a lot more benefit, but I absolutely believe that none of these inventions can detract from your life at all. They can only add value. All net positives. All right, let's start with number one. An electric scooter. I really think that electric scooters, Andrew, are going to be the future of transportation. Um, they're becoming lighter, they're becoming stronger, the batteries are lasting longer, and there's the lowest learning curve of any PEV personal electric vehicle. No, I mean, I see it all around the city now. Um, I see a lot of families use it. Obviously, I wouldn't recommend putting too many people on a scooter, but I've seen up to three people on a scooter before. I wouldn't recommend it again, but I'm just saying it being used as a mode of travel, especially around the city in the bike lanes, I just, it's, it's just increasing a lot. Yeah, and I think that there's different use cases. For example, if you live in the suburbs, using it around your cul-de-sac or something could be more useful, but you could take it off-roading to like uh, see more nature or explore more parks nearby your house. Right. So it's not really like just limited. I think in the city, it's almost like a vehicle replacement, but in the suburbs, it could be used more for exploring nature, getting more sunshine, more vitamin D. Dude, I personally love using our uh, used scooters and like putting bags on them and then you can run errands and it being lightweight allows you to maneuver on it. I can put one foot up. I... I'd be doing all types of acrobatic stuff on the on the scooter. Yeah, so I, I mean, we have friends that live in California or Seattle that are more like in suburban areas that they, they have Ferraris or exotic cars, but when they come to New York City, they still love being on the U-scooter. Yeah. So it goes to show you, it's like, it, different vehicles are perfect for different environments. Yeah, and I think there's all different levels of scooters. You can get one that's like $4,000 or you can get something else that's a lot smaller. Obviously, a lot of friends ask us that are like, yo, guys, you guys are the scooters guys. So like, what's a really lightweight scooter that you like to use around the city? And we always recommend you scooters. I mean, that's the one we've been using. You guys can look on our IG and watch all our past videos. We use you scooters, the GT, the GT Sport, and the Booster V. Yeah, I mean, we actually have a code down below for $75 off. If I was to break down scooters, a lot of people like to do it by price point, but actually it go like the lightweight ones are 25 to 50 pounds. The middleweight ones are 50 to 75 pounds. And in my opinion, anything over 75 pounds on a scooter is pretty much heavyweight. So you really need to see like what is the best for your use case, right? Mm -hmm. um, I would say that the lightweight is the best place to go, Andrew, because it's kind of like just taking a backpack or at worst a piece of rolling luggage into a store. You know what I mean? Like you can take it places and then leave it in the shop. Yeah. Like even in a coffee shop. Yeah, I mean, I, I tell restaurants like, hey, I'm gonna fold it down, I'm gonna put it in the corner. Sometimes they're like, okay, we have space for it. Sometimes, once in a while, they're kind of like, oh, can you not bring that in here? But you know, you can shove it underneath a, a, a bar or something like that. I honestly think in 10 years, so much of America, obviously it depends, because you know, if you live out in the countryside, then the use case is just gonna be like riding around your farm or whatever. But like, I really think that you scooters, electric scooters, I'm sorry, just electric scooters in general are going to become incredibly dominant in the personal electric vehicle space. Moving on to number two, Andrew, air fryers. Whoa. Now I know this is a meme on the internet, but I think air fryers, especially for guys, they're a meme for a reason. Why, why, why such a meme? I, I think it's because it's the fastest way of cooking food that actually makes the food taste good. Because at a micro, a microwave will cook anything but it doesn't necessarily taste good. Yeah, it's just soggy, overcooked. It's a little bit like sometimes has a gummy texture. And I think people have finally moved past that point in air fryer usage where they're just frying things that are frozen that were meant to be fried that are generally, for the most part, I don't even care if it's protein or uh, you know meat or like imitation meat. Generally, that stuff that's breaded out of a bag is not good for you. Yeah. But I think that people have kind of moved on to grilling 
almost like whole proteins or, or using it really as an oven, like yeah. a way quicker oven. I right? mean, I think it's great for chicken thighs, steak, fish. It literally, you can almost cook anything, even frozen pasta. If you have like a silicone bowl in there that you can use in there, you can actually put the pasta inside and sort of air fry or bake the frozen pasta like from right. Trader Joe's. You can do it. And especially nowadays, they got all these chickpea pastas and all these like different options to be more healthy. I mean, a lot of proteins, Andrew, you could just coat it in olive oil, put on your spices, and the great thing about the spices is they're generally low calorie and you can make it almost taste like whatever culture you want, right? But, Depending on how but, you spice it. But you're saying that guys especially, I mean, and just maybe just anybody who doesn't love to cook and because at the end of the day, listen, either using the oven or using the stovetop, it does taste, does make food taste great, but also it takes way longer. It's a lot more trouble. You got preheat. You got to use the burner. The air fryer turns on right away. It's super easy to clean. Yeah, I would just recommend venting the smell of the air fryer upward so it can go somehow into your range hood if you have one of those. But it's still going to smell less than the oven categorically. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And um, I think that you can even cook steak in it, for example. You know, there's certain air fryers. Obviously, if it goes up to 500 Fahrenheit, you can get more sear and stuff like that. But anyway, I just think there's a lot of accessories that make it ultra easy to clean. Like you don't even really need to clean your air fryer, right? If you have the parchment paper and the silicon liners and things like that. And I just feel like the advent of technology, it always, things always get good at like 4.0. You know, the iPhone, it got really good at iPhone 4. Mm. You know what I mean? And I just feel like air fryers, electric scooters, they're at their 4.0 iteration phase where it's like they've pretty much mitigated most of the downsides and it's only going to get better from here. How has the air fryer changed your life? I think just cooking proteins and whole vegetables in a way, it makes me appreciate going out to eat more because we used to go out to eat three times a day. And at some point, it's just really not good for your body to do that. Like you're okay. just taking way too much stuff because you don't really know what everybody puts in there. So anyway, I mean, I just think that the air fryer, it's almost like an oven in a microwave got fused with a shrink ray, sort of like the electric scooter or specifically a U scooter, Andrew. It's like a bicycle and a moped also got fused together with some sort of futuristic shrink ray. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think that these things can benefit a guy's life so much. And most guys, you know, that have a new air fryer, Andrew, they do use it a lot. I would say not that many people do not. Point number three, Andrew, every guy needs useful, productive subreddit forums that they subscribe to on their like homepage. Mm. And a lot of guys, you know, you can use it for memes. You can use it for all types of more adult things. Or I don't know what you, a lot of people use Reddit for. But literally, I found some subreddits recently, Andrew, that are incredibly useful. Right. But why? I mean, Reddit kind of has also a... Kind of bad reputation sometimes too. Yeah, because a lot of people complain on Reddit and a lot of people vent and a lot of people live on like three different screens. You know how like the people like, some people like live their life on the internet now right. and all they do is complain on Reddit all day. Mm -hmm. Like don't go to those forums. Don't like use those. I think there's ones about weight training, diet, nutrition, motivation, success. Obviously, infamously and famously, there's a ton of uh, subreddits about investing in finance. Obviously, Wall Street bets being more like infamous. Right. But there's ones about like slow growth, right. blue I, chip stocks. I, I think the point is that Reddit in itself is not bad. There's actually a ton of great information and great discussions going on Reddit. But you have to know where to look. It does depend on the subreddit that you choose. There are more subreddits who are more like, you know, toxic than others. So you just have to know which one yeah, you're getting I, into. I don't actually subscribe to any toxic ones because right. I actually, I, I want to be smarter and just know more things, especially learning things in a no. conversational way. That's a particular learning style that appeals to me. I'm cool you're, with text. You, I don't need visual audio from YouTube videos. You're even saying I watch those you don't too. use Reddit for the deep, dark corners of Reddit. That's no. what a lot of people use Reddit for. They use it for like, yeah, I want to hear some crazy stories. I'm like, ah, I don't need to. Yeah, I actually uh, only started using Reddit in terms of actually having my own account and, and lurking during the pandemic. Mm. Like, so I, here's the, I, I'll say one word of caution. Growing up on Reddit is not a good idea. You need to go out into the real world and live a bunch of life and then go back to Reddit to get some uh, supplementary information in a conversational way that your friends don't have. Yes, and there are subreddits full of people who are more out there living life. And those are the subreddits that I find more useful. They're not internet people. They're not. They're just yeah. using the internet to supplement information to make they, 
their R I R L life better. Yes. Moving on to point number four, Andrew, supplements. The reason why I wanted to talk about vitamins and supplements is because I realized there's so much like selling going on these days, right? People want you to subscribe to their supplement pack. People want you to buy their powder. Mm -hmm. People want you to do all these things that uh, are essentially for profitability, right? right? And I think that this space gets really, really murky. And I realized that Everybody only needs to take a daily multivitamin at the base level. Okay. Why is that though? Because a daily multivitamin has everything. Obviously, there's some people that have medical conditions. They're really going to need to supplement it with like hyper strong dosages of like supplementary, you know, micronutrients or vitamins or things like that. But like for most people, you, you just take one to two multivitamins a day, maybe like uh, two different brands, you know, they have different absorption rates or they have different, you know, like stats or whatever and you're going to be good for the rest of the day because for me i realize a lot of people they just want the most simple explanation of something by a lot of people you mean yourself yeah myself i'm that type of guy i want to take two daily multivitamins one early in the day one later in the day and just be done i used to take like 14 a day but i just realized i'm not that type of guy who wants to take 14 pills in the morning and you know you know how like some guys can break down and for like with like five paragraphs why they take each pill right yeah and i just think that there has to be for a lot of guys and, I, and i'm not saying for everybody watching but if you're like me you're kind of lazy you're like this is good enough mm. this ain't the 10 out of 10 but this is good enough how do people find the right supplements do you just go on amazon the ones that has the most reviews and the most like orders yeah like yeah like honestly if you just looked at uh amazon and you take a look at the vi uh the multivitamins you could take two of the same ones or you could just buy two different ones just to give yourself some different looks. Mm. Um, moving on to number five, Andrew, weightlifting. Um, I've only been weightlifting for like six months, you know, but I realize now that uh, this is also one of those things where you can go deep into the rabbit hole if you really want, or you can keep it really basic. Right. Yeah, like actually most people, in my opinion, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, for the average person that is not trying to you know, look like a uh, amateur or obviously near tier bro, pro bodybuilder, you actually really only need dumbbells. Oh yeah. You mean kind of like uh, to do dumbbell workouts, different versions of dumbbell workouts, how incline, decline, press, shoulder press, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like you could buy $500 power block uh, pro dumbbells. You know, that's like your premium tier ones. They look like uh, squares or like cylinders, or you could just go all the way down to the uh, adjustable dumbbells that are like one tenth of the price that are about like 50, $60. Right, right, right. But literally that's all you need. And I was thinking about it. And I was thinking about like fitness and nutrition, Andrew, and I compare it a lot to basketball. In basketball, at the base level, you only need a hoop, a ball, and sneakers, right? That's all you really need. However, of course, you can get shooting sleeves, a shooting machine, ankle braces, dynamic pro stretching for two hours, traction pads, electrolyte powder, and it's true, at a pro level, basketball has all those things, but you do not need all those things to get good at basketball. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like there's a lot of people making a lot of money off a lot of content that's coaching your average person to operate at a pro tier, but they, they're sort of doing it to monetize, not realizing that the majority of people, the bulk distribution of people want to stay at the basic tier. Right, right, right. So yeah, I mean, I think if you just understand a few things with the dumbbells, Andrew, eccentric versus concentric, isometric, literally it does not matter. You know how like everybody's like trying to sell you on like, these crazy lifts at this angle works like your lateral delt versus your interior delt. Mm -hmm. I just don't think your average person cares that much, even though that stuff is legit. Right. Um, moving on to number six, Andrew, I think that every person could literally use some sort of grocery delivery service. Mm. And I think the reason is because with all the discounts available nowadays, especially, you know, all the apps, Andrew, they're trying to gain user data and stuff like that. Yeah, you could, you know, have some privacy concerns, but ultimately it's going to save you time and save you money and keep you more disciplined in terms of not buying like sugary, high caloric, high, whatever bad for you snacks by not going to the store. Right. Because not only can you stack the discounts, it's going to go to your uh, door. You don't need to spend time at the supermarket waiting in line and dealing with the, you know, this person or that person, but you can actually find a lot of like items on nutrition subreddits that you would never have bought if you were just randomly walking through the store. Yeah. I think one of the best things about it of having the grocery delivery is uh, ordering a lot of heavy items like sparkling water. Like when we want to order like six packs of sparkling water, it's actually a lot of trouble for me to even put that on the scooter 
and bring it back to the house. Like I really can't even, but because of the delivery service, they can carry a lot more and then they can drop off like six or seven cases of sparkling water at our apartment. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I really think it's going to be the future, to be honest. Like I said, all these things, guys, you can start them now. And, uh, but I just finally feel like they're at the point now where like any user can derive a heavy volume of benefit from it. But literally in the future, in 10, 20 years, you might not even be able to go to a physical grocery store. Ooh. So you might as well get on the trend now. Uh, point number seven, Andrew, things that uh, everybody needs is just anything that allows you to cut out a step to get little life inconveniences out of the way. Like mm. I realized for a trash can, Andrew, one thing is like, cause we know a lot of people are along a lot of different age ranges. One thing I noticed about like young guys is their trash cans never get emptied. Whether we're talking about their bathroom trash can, their kitchen trash can, mm -hmm. they, they'll like line their trash can once and then it just fills up and they just try to cram the top down because right. they don't want to empty it out. <laughs> so why not get yourself a trash can or some sort of like trash bag holder that makes it way easier? You know mm. what I mean? Like basically make it convenient for yourself to keep your place clean. Right. Because the more that you're, I mean, some people, I know they feel type of way about like showing their trash, but it's like, if you are a very active household, you're going to fill up that trash party twice a day anyways. And you just want to be reminded to empty out your trash often. Yeah, if you really are have an issue with like open top trash, then just put it on the inside of your like under the sink cabinet. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I like, mean, I guess for us, we don't really have an issue with like fruit flies and all these bugs and stuff like that. I can see in places where, you know, roaches are an issue, you do have to have a closed lid. Yeah. But aside from that, Essentially, yeah. figure out a way and everybody's situation is different so you can take your trash out constantly to keep your place more clean. Right. Um, I think even for mouthwash, Andrew, for example, you know that ACT bottle? You can literally like just squeeze the right dosage of mouthwash out, right? Like for some people, for some guys, it's crazy to say putting mouthwash into the cap and measuring it out is too much work. It's an extra step. Why not just get the ACT mouthwash? Yeah. Make it easy for yourself to do things you need to do. Get some floss picks. If your toothbrush isn't vibrating, just get some disposable vibrating ones. They got different tiers of them now. You can get a $10 one, Andrew, that counts 45 seconds. So you know that, oh, I, I brushed my teeth for 45 seconds on the uh, left side. I brushed my teeth for 45 seconds on the white, you know, on the right side. Like you can get that detailed with it if you want nowadays. Yeah. Um, also vacuuming. If you just get the Dyson or some type of Dyson-like strong cordless vacuum, Andrew, you will vacuum a lot more. Yeah, they got Dyson knockoffs that are cheaper, that are pretty much designed like Dyson, but maybe just aren't exactly Dyson. Yeah, just make sure the, the I guess there's a warranty or something like that. So right. if something happens, you can get it replaced. Um, oh, you don't want whitening strips, Andrew? Guess what? There's some whitening toothpaste now. But guess what? The more expensive whitening toothpastes, they cost more. Right. But they're better. Right. Because they're using better ingredients. Right. Um, I, Andrew, I use uh, magnetic battery packs on my cell phone even when I'm around the house. So a lot of people would say, oh, I only use magnetic battery packs for my cell phone when I'm out and about, right? But I actually use it in the house because I don't even want to be chained to my phone charging it in the wall. I hate to see people do that in the airports and stuff like that. Or when people are like just chained to the wall. I'm like, your physical ability to move around is now being chained by the fact your phone needs to get charged. Right, right, okay. So yeah, just stuff like that. Anyway, guys, these were just seven things. Not, I don't rank them all in the same amount of importance. I think that last one about like, you know, easy to empty trash cans, that's not gonna impact your life as much as getting a scooter. All right, of these seven, what's your top two, like for sure that people gotta buy? I would say my absolute top two things would probably out of, be out of these two would be an electric scooter and subscribe to some ultra useful subreddit forums. Oh, wow. Scooter and Reddit yeah. ranking number two. Yeah, but selective Reddit. Right, right. Selective Reddit, not all of Reddit. No, because I think that it would change your mind and benefit you, you enough. You, like, you know what it is? All of Reddit is not good, but selective Reddit, very good. Incredibly useful. And right. like I said, I think everybody learns in different ways. Some people are going to need to subscribe to YouTubers, right? Because they learn in like an audio visual way. But guess what? Sometimes those YouTubers, they want to sell you a bunch of subscriptions and right. like courses too, because that's their monetization. Guys, I can confirm that all of these things have changed David's life in some way. Yeah. I mean, and in that, it's also changed my life because we live together. So I end up using some of the same stuff. But man, I would say these are all pretty... Pretty good thing. So I think you guys let us know in the comments down below what you think about these items, which one of these seven 
would you buy first? Obviously, you know, the electric scooter, air fryer, these things are a little bit more costly, but really not that expensive if you think about it. No, if air you fryers think about are like under $200. Yeah, what it could do for your life. I'm not saying that everybody in every situation in life can use 100% of these, but definitely there's no way that any of these things would detract from your life. They only have the potential to make your life easier or add value. If you walk away from this video considering, truly considering one of these new things, it's going to help your life. Yeah. I mean, I would compare it to like, yeah, different gadgets. You know, there's different usage rates for different situations. Let us know what gadgets you use or what products you use that have dramatically changed your life. Like I said, I'm a type of person who needs things very, very simple. I don't want to take 14 vitamins in the morning. Let us know in the comment section below. Until next time, we're the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.